My name's John Crouch. Um, I'm from Wick Wemakong First Nation, uh, but I grew up in Perry Sound, Ontario. I now live in Toronto. In 2004, I was diagnosed with uh, hepatitis C. So as you can imagine, I spent a lot of time with doctors. I didn't run into many problems with uh, my specialists, but with family doctors, I did experience some problems. I often found that when uh, family doctors found out that I was Aboriginal First Nations, that uh, assumptions were made about who I was as a person. And oftentimes those assumptions led to questions about, um, about who I was as a First Nations person, like the perks I would get as a First Nations person. And I wondered to myself, why would you be asking me those questions? Like whether I get free education or not, or whether I pay taxes. I couldn't quite understand why, where that was coming from. Or I'd get questions about my identity. And I would ask them, I'd say, why are you asking me that question? Where is that coming from? And more often than not, I'd get the answer, well, you don't look like one. And I thought to myself, what does one look like? It seemed to me that assumptions were being made based on, I'm not sure what. Is it what they see in the movies? All I know is it made me very, feel very un uncomfortable. I, I sometimes would think that perhaps I've internalized things that have happened to me in the past. You know, growing up with a First Nations mother and a father who was German-Canadian and having to listen to people who are non-native say things about Aboriginal people that were derogatory and I felt very uncomfortable hearing those things and oftentimes I'd never speak up. And then hearing things coming from First Nations people that I think were also internalized on their part where they'd say, well, there's no way you can be First Nations because you don't look like me. So I'm not sure whether I bring that experience from the past into a doctor's office or whether it is coming from something internalized within the doctor's experiences, those assumptions. All I know is it made me feel very uncomfortable whenever those kind of questions are asked of me. And I don't think there's any place for those kind of questions in a healthcare setting. My assumption is that all people should feel safe in a healthcare setting. And I think it's more so for First Nations people because of past history. So to make assumptions without knowing anything about the historical context of uh, First Nations uh, life experiences can be hurtful you know, and damaging. And at times I felt like shutting down and not responding to their questions at all. I can only imagine how it must feel for a First Nations person who may be elderly, for example. How, how those types of questions could be quite hurtful and it would be very difficult for those pers that person to come back and see that doctor again. You know, let's, let alone to adhere to the doctor's care. You know, and follow the uh, prescriptions that the doctor is uh, putting forth for that patient. I'm not sure really why this happens and how, how it can be taught to young doctors not to make these assumptions. I think it happens with young people as well. You know, that people make assumptions about young First Nations kids without realizing, it, without knowing for sure their, their home experience, their life experience. Oftentimes these young First Nations kids could be caregivers in one way or another, whether it's caring for their siblings, 
caring for parents or caring for grandparents. They don't know whether they're living in uh, uh, safe environments. And if assumptions are being made about those kids, are they going to go back to that doctor? I'm not sure. Well, my conception of health and well-being is that everything is interconnected. It's a holistic approach to health. You know, knowing that everything on this planet is interconnected uh, grounds me so that I can think that, you know, when I, everything I eat, everything I consume, every action I do, every interaction I have with other people is going to affect my health in one way or another. I, I was working with a, a, with a surgeon and well he was part of the team that we were uh, doing the te teaching session with and the conversation turned around to identity like I was speaking about before and how even if you do not look like people expect you to look, for example, as a First Nations person, you still carry that internal baggage, let's say, into every setting you walk into. Wondering if people are judging you based on something that may be internalized. But then when they do find out you're First Nations, and that becomes um, externalized. Oftentimes, what you were thinking was going, was going on is actually going on. And this surgeon said to me, he says, I've never walked into a situation. He was non-Aboriginal. He says, I've never walked into a room. I've never walked into a situation. I've never once question my own identity and he said what you said is very telling and it may be one of the reasons First Nations people do have a mistrust of the medical community and it's not just doctors nurses every level of uh, the medical community you're dealing with, right down to pharmacists. I think I mentioned in the past going to the pharmacy and having the pharmacist say to me after I told her I was First Nations and that she would have to phone in for my prescription for my hep C drugs. And she said, that's going to take too long. I can't do it today. And I th thought, that's not right. And I talked to my specialists, and they actually, their office phoned that pharmacist and said, my client will not be dealing with you anymore. And I found a new uh, uh, pharmacist. I think one of the best doctors I ever dealt with is um, the hepatologist I'm dealing with now. You know. He's non-judgmental. He knows I'm First Nation and he's never brought it up once in our interactions. He treats me as if I'm like everybody else. And I appreciate that, you know. I don't want to go into an office and have my back up. I want to feel safe. And my hepatologist makes me feel safe. You know, he, he never ever once judge me because of my illness and backtracked it to my lifestyle. All he ever said was, this is what you have and this is how we're going to treat it. There was never an assumption made once and that meant the world to me. And to this day, I go back to him willingly. I'm not afraid to go back to him to see him because I, I, I feel safe and uh, I know I'm going to be cared for. I'm asked about my ancestry all the time. 
I think it's how it's framed. I would like to know why you're asking. Because in my daily interactions with other people, I never ask people about their ancestry. I question why those questions are asked. If someone asks me where I'm from, that's a different story. If someone is curious and frames the question in a sensitive manner that is not like going to end up with the next question being, so do you get free education? So do you not pay taxes? Then I feel insulted because why are you making those connections? I also think that when I'm asked about my ancestry and I identify as First Nations, and people say to me, well, you can't be all First Nations. And I say, no, my father is German Canadian. Yes, that's true. Well, there you go, is usually the response. I tend to think, perhaps if I lived in Germany, I would identify as a German. But I live on the lands of my mother's ancestors who have been here for millennium. That's who I identify as. And, and that should not be disputed, and I should not have to defend it. I think knowledge is invaluable. I was given two textbooks meant for grade the high school students. I read both of them in a night, basically easy reading and it's not the dumbed down doctors but I'm just saying it's that easy to pick up just a little bit of knowledge about um, First Nations history in Canada and, their, and First Nations people's treatment uh, by the government and how that historic trauma has carried through to the present. I think if you're going to be working anywhere, you're going to eventually run into a First Nations person. What if you're sent to a community up north? I would hope that you would, as a doctor, would do a little research into the residential school experience, for example, the 60s scoop. Familiarize yourself with First Nations terms, how First Nations people like to be addressed, what a reserve is, you know, about the reserve system. And I think it would make you a better doctor. I think it would make you a better person, not just a doctor. First Nations people are the original peoples of this land. And I think people have to realize there was a time in our history where they thought we would disappear. Think about that. Disappear. But we didn't. And so I think it's incumbent on a really good doctor to be sensitive to that.